I started my fully fledged professional career at age 18 as a member of New York City Ballet. New York City Ballet was founded in 1948 by the choreographer George Balanchine and the philanthropist Lincoln Kirsten. And it quickly became a laboratory for Balanchine's aesthetic innovations. Soon after completing my PhD, I began my research at CERN, a laboratory in Geneva, Switzerland that was founded in 1954. That's one of the premier centers for discovery in particle physics. Early in our career, Sarah and I deepened our expertise through these affiliations with institutions founded in the mid 20th century to push forward innovation and discovery in our respective fields, within the arts for New York City Ballet and within the sciences for CERN. Which may explain why we jumped at the opportunity to co-design and teach a course here at Yale called The Physics of Dance. But we're not gonna talk about that today. We're gonna to talk about other possibilities that emerged from our collaboration. It would be simplest for each of us to think that our own disciplines were asking the most interesting questions about the universe using methods that were best tuned to give us the answers. But we believe that we have everything to gain by joining with another discipline as a serious research partner. I'm going to define potential for us in the context of potential energy in physics, OK? It starts with the idea of a force. You need a force to have potential energy. Let's just go with electricity and magnetism. Take two objects that both have positive charge. They're repelling each other. As we bring these two objects near each other, we're increasing the potential energy of the system, which means that if I let it go, there's a great potential for motion. Poetics has at its root the Greek word meaning to make or to do. Inherent in the word poetics is the idea of a creative act. Aristotle's Poetics, published circa 335 BC, is an early effort to define poetry across disciplines. While he focuses on epic poetry and tragedy, he does allude to dance, emphasizing rhythm or rhythmical movement as its primary representational force. Potential poetics, for us, pulls together a scientific concept with an aesthetic one to describe what our interdisciplinary collaboration is and does. We search for potential poetics by crafting dialogues between our disciplines. These dialogues juxtapose different methods of learning in an effort to more deeply understand how we know and what we know in a new way. Potential poetics allows for the coexistence of different kinds of reasoning, scientific and aesthetic, qualitative and quantitative. And in coexisting, we create the possibility for new knowledge to emerge. We're gonna demonstrate two juxtapositions that search for potential poetics. Let's go back in time. Circa 1900s early, St. Petersburg, Russia, the Imperial Ballet School, where the choreographer George Balanchine studied as a boy. There he learned a particular approach to the pirouette, and it looked something like this. A plie in fourth position, this is called, with the arms in a nice curved third position. From here, the dancer takes off, pushing that back right foot into the floor, pulls that left arm into first position, and rotates in the pirouette in a position that looks something like this. If we're gonna talk about rotational motion in physics, we have to start with some definitions. First, what is the mass that's gonna be doing the rotating? And in this circumstance, it's the body. Second, about what will that mass be rotating? And it's not enough for us to define a point in space. You can rotate your body around a point in space in a number of different ways. We need an axis of rotation. For our purposes, that axis is gonna be the infinite line that comes in through the ceiling, through my head, and down through my toe. Next question, how is the mass organized with respect to that axis of rotation? That gives us our moment of inertia or resistance to rotation. And finally, how do we begin that rotation? What force do we apply? And in what way? That gives us the torque. 
Fast forward in time, Balanchine has immigrated to the United States and New York City Ballet exists as his laboratory for aesthetic innovation. He is surrounded by the lights, excitement, energy of New York City and American culture and would like to take his technique, his Russian classical technique that he inherited as a child and update it to speak to his contemporary moment. One of the sites he focused on was the preparation for the pirouette. He looked at this position and he thought, you know, from here you know exactly what's going to happen. The only thing that can happen is a pirouette. He asked his dancers to try something new, to shift their weight over that left leg and to extend that right leg into a nice deep lunge. From this energized position, anything could happen. The dancer could move forward, back, side to side. That's good. <laughs> or <laughs> pirouette. And that is torque. What's happened is we've taken the point of application and moved it further away from the axis of rotation. It's like you've got something that's stuck and you have a wrench and all of a sudden you have a longer handle. Having placed the legs like so, he realized that the arms no longer matched. They looked antiquated. So he asked his dancers to please stretch both arms elongating along the diagonal to reach. He described this as reaching for diamonds. He spent a lot of time in Monte Carlo in his youth. <laughs> From here, the dancer was to pull their arms tightly against the body, resolving the pirouette with the arms like so. The pirouette then would look something like this, wish me luck. And that is moment of inertia. What's happened is the initial preparation has pushed the mass further away from the axis of rotation. And during the turn itself, the mass has come in closer to the axis of rotation. A greater change in moment of inertia gives you faster rotation. And you might be thinking, but it's your hands. There's not a lot of mass involved that's making that change. But for moment of inertia, you take each piece of mass and you multiply it by the distance to that axis of rotation squared. So there's a multiplying effect. Balanchine wasn't a physicist, but he used his aesthetic reasoning to design a pirouette that was ultimately more efficient and more powerful from a physics perspective. The Balanchine rotational motion dialogue we've just shown you has a kind of neat poetics. On the one hand, dance history and choreographic innovation and on the other, a clear manipulation of physics principles. When you move into modern physics, the dialogue between physics and dance becomes less clear, more complicated, messier, impossible. So the first question is, why would you go there? From the perspective of science, you go there because that's where the boundary of knowledge is. That's where my research is. And that's where it becomes particularly difficult to explain. From the dance perspective, as an artist, I'm interested in using art as a window into the nature of being, into the total sensorial encounter with the thing itself. When you turn to subatomic physics, that sensorial encounter is withheld. The withholding necessitates the development of new strategies. That, to me, holds potential. We're going to give you one more example of potential poetics. Have you ever worried about the speed of light? It's very strange that the universe has a speed limit. Normally, if you keep pushing on something, you can get it going faster and faster and faster. For a long time, particle physicists have been worrying about an entirely different problem. And that is, why isn't everything moving at the speed of light? Here's the issue. Particles that are massless, by definition, move at the speed of light. And there was a tremendous challenge getting the acquisition of mass into the formulas of our model. So the question was, if we can't fit mass in here, how do we ever slow anything down? Peter Higgs and some of his colleagues came up with a very bold idea. And this idea 
won two of them, the Nobel Prize in Particle Physics in, in 2013, the Nobel Prize in Physics. They said, imagine there's a field everywhere in the universe, and we just haven't detected it yet. What happens is some particles zip through this field at the speed of light. They don't see the field at all. There's no interaction. But other particles, the particles with mass, as they move through this field, interact with the field. And those interactions slow them down and are the acquisition of mass. We can't dance at the speed of light, not even close, thanks to the fact that we have mass, among other reasons. The rules change completely when you move from the subatomic realm that Sarah studies into the macro world where my choreographic imagination lives. We took this irreconcilable difference between our disciplines as a new challenge and decided to focus our attention on the Higgs boson discovery, asking the question, where in this might lie potential poetics? How, within the limits of our dancing bodies, might we imagine the Higgs? I took Emily with me on one of my research trips to CERN, and while we were there, we interviewed a number of my colleagues. We learned something very important that physicists and dancers share in common, and that is that we both embody our knowledge. I appropriated this phrase from a physicist we interviewed named Mike. We had asked him to describe the Higgs to lay people. And without even recognizing he was doing it, he translated his expertise into gestures. He embodied his knowledge. But choreographers don't just appropriate and present raw everyday movement, they aestheticize it. Or, or imagine Higgs decays. Or imagine Higgs decays as people who gather. Or imagine Higgs decays as people who gather and disperse. Or imagine Higgs decays as people who gather and disperse and they go. We just demonstrated for you a choreographic strategy known as accumulation. Accumulation also applies on the science side. Scientists, uh, as they accumulate data and do the analysis, they accumulate evidence for the Higgs boson discovery. It was surprising to us just how deeply intertwined the physicist's kinesthetic imagination was with their understanding of the science. The real poetic potential of this project lives in a science art video we created called Three Views of the Higgs in Dance. Searching for potential poetics demands taking another discipline seriously as a research partner. Sarah and I began our careers tied to institutions that had been founded in the 20th century to foster innovation and discovery. Through our dialogue, we want to contribute to innovation and discovery in the 21st. So how do you talk across difference? What is it that you care about? And where is your expertise? We think that there's an, a lot to be gained by reaching out outward to other disciplines to help craft potential poetics. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>